Hey everybody, welcome back to American Idol Unaired. I am your host, Bennett Shear, and today's guest from this season of American Idol, please welcome Jordan to the show. Hi, Jordan. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I am awesome, and I'm so excited to talk to you and to get to know you. And um, unfortunately, we did not see you on American Idol this season, but we've been talking to a lot of extremely talented, amazing musicians who did get a chance to perform in front of the judges. You did get the chance to go to Hollywood and to be a part of this experience. And I'm just really looking forward to hearing what you have to say about that. So just to start out, if you could tell us about who you are uh, as an artist and what got you into music and sort of your story. Yeah, my name is Jordan. I'm from DC. I'm 17 years old. When I shot for Idol, I was 16. And um, I have been doing music for as long as I've been alive. I've always been in art schools. Um, I sing a lot of classical music and musical theater. And for myself, I write my own music, which is more pop, you know, indie like music ish. And I'm preparing to like release some and I've been producing my own stuff as of recently. So yeah. That's awesome. Now, as far as Idol coming about, I know that uh, there are two ways in which uh, somebody goes on this show. They either are uh, sought out by a producer or a casting agent of some sort, or they they might audition themselves. They might say, you know what, I'm going to go for it and uh, just try out. So which which one was that for you? I was scouted on Instagram. It's actually a really long story. I was scouted ye- a year before I actually went to um, audition for the judges and back then I was like 15 years old and I was still very like new to everything and I did it and they were like it's a no right now and then a year later they reached out to me again and was like we want to hear from you again and then that was finally like the yeah we want you to come and audition for the judges this time so they were like working on a whole nother season when it started out but it was all about timing and the 20 season it all worked out so uh so you finally get the chance to go on for season 20 and uh, when you are having this audition for the producers this go around, what song are you singing? Oh, I say, OK, so for my produce for the producers, I sang two songs. I sang As the World Caves In by Matt Maltese and I sang Traitor by Olivia Rodrigo. Mm. Yeah. Any feedback that they gave you before you actually made it to the judges? They were like, we really love Olivia in your voice. Like, we really love that song in your voice. And they really wanted me to go with a poppy feel. They know what they want. And they were just like, we love Olivia in your voice. It sounds great. We love the newer music. So go with that. So I was mm-hmm. like, yeah. Got it. Now, when you made it to the judges, what city did they send you out to to film that? Um, LA. For me, it was a choice. They asked where I wanted to go. For a lot of people, it wasn't a choice. But for me, it was a choice. And they were like, which one do you want to go to? And I was like, let's go to LA. That's cool. I've never been. So it was like, and it's like literally across the country from me. So I was like, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And um, arriving there, that's super exciting. And it, it's definitely a long process. I mean, I've learned a lot just from talking to other contestants about how it is not the quick, easy process of you go in for five minutes, you get there, and you can be waiting for days. If you're lucky, you're in day one, but most likely you're there a couple of days. So uh, how long were you there? For Hollywood, I went on audition day one. And I... Oh, wait, was I? Yeah, I was day one. I was day one for auditions. We were like really close to getting through the day. I was waiting for a really long time, though. I was supposed to go very early in the day to go to the judges, and I got pushed back so far. And we had went, I was supposed to go like before noon. I had ended up going like 5 p.m. It was just like a waiting game. They didn't know really they the order they wanted until it started happening and they were like okay we're gonna push you we're gonna let this person go and then it'll be you and it'll be like it just kept going on so I, even though i was day one i still had to wait a very long time and it made me nervous the waiting made me more anxious yeah, than like sure. i would again if i went at the beginning yeah i'm so curious about that because you're not the first person who said that the original time they were supposed to go gets delayed and i mean it could be scheduling but there could be other reasons behind it i mean it's a it's a machine it's a well-oiled machine so I'm sure that, you know, you don't know, but there's, there, there could be many reasons why five, gosh, but, but five hours, man, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be time. frustrating. Um, did you find that being there with all those other people, was it a chance to socialize, meet other people, get to know each other, or were you kind of more in your own headspace? Um, I am usually a more of a quiet person. I stepped out of my comfort zone a lot for Idol. I met a lot of people that are really nice. Um, we still have like a group chat. We're all in the group yeah. chat. We all talk and like 
uh, communicate with each other. I think that I wasn't like one of the people that were just like always talking. I kind of stayed with my little people that I had met the first time I was there. Um, it was the people made it the experience. Like they were mm. the best part of the experience more so than even like getting to be on TV or like getting filmed and all that stuff. The people were really nice and kind. It was not competitive. Like no one really felt like there was obviously a few people that were just like really uptight, but for the most part, everybody just was chill. We all had fun. We sang songs together, all this type of stuff. Yeah. No, I, 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 that's the vibe that I, you know, not only do I hear other people talk about that on this show, but I feel like it, it kind of is easy to see when you watch the show, even for the contestants that did get aired, even for the people that are left, it definitely comes across that you guys are there to enjoy this experience together. And while it is a competition, I think that you're all, you're all going for the same thing. And yep. no matter what place you get, or even if you air, you're kind of all in it together. So it, it makes a lot of sense that there's no reason to be you know, aggressive or nasty about it when you could all just enjoy it and, right. you know, have a good time. So there's also tons of filming that has to get done before going to the judge room, B-roll, interviews. Do you enjoy that? Is that kind of just, you just do it to get it over with or do you like it? Um, the, the, <laughs> the interview po process was very long. Again, a lot of waiting. I had to wait a very long time to get interviewed just with like a singular person because um, it was so many people for initial auditions. So I remember the interview process going pretty smoothly, but obviously they want a story and that's yeah. just kind of always what it is. So they asked me like very deep questions. And I know people that like got cut from the show because they wouldn't answer questions, which kind of is sad. But for me, it wasn't like I, it wasn't like I was hiding anything. It wasn't like it was super like out of the scope of what I would talk about. So even though it was saddening to like answer certain questions, it was like, this is, it's TV. They're gonna ask me questions that are like not the, the best, but they want a story. And it was like, you know, I didn't give them a hard time about it. Like I, you know, it's their job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, that, that can be a tough position to be in because it's like, it, it's, it's probably difficult when you know that like there's certain things that you have to do to get to your dream. And you know, it's like, if you can, if you can make it through American Idol, you can make it through anything because they, they put you through the ropes. And um, ev eventually, once you go through the interviews and the B-roll uh, and you make it to the judges after a long day, I'm sure at this point you're just happy to be there. And I'm wondering if the nerves are, are heightened, if they've dialed down because you've just, or just you want to get it over with. What are you feeling? When I got to the audition room, I was so nervous. I was shaking mm, so okay. bad. Like I was shaking. I, f I feel like when I'm singing, I'm not as nervous, but certain things like happened that were not my favorite. When I got to finally get an audition room, my guitar was preset in the audition room. Cause the first song I sang, I didn't need my guitar. And the second song they wanted me to sing, I did need my guitar. So it was preset in the room, but since I had waited so long, my guitar had fell out of tune, mm. which really sucks. So I was playing with a guitar that was out of tune. It wasn't bad. It just was like, oh, it, it just sounds a little off. It, it, it doesn't sound how I wanted it to sound. And I sang, I think I sang really well. I gave a performance and that's all I can say at the end of the day. Like, even though things go wrong, I couldn't control it. So it was like, I did good with the things I could control, but I was so nervous until they gave me that yes. Like I was sitting there like, <sighs> I was shaking and everything. Oh, sure. Well, so do, do the judges, do they make you feel any less nervous when you walk in was the discussion making it you feel more at ease or the discussion the discussion we had was really nice it was more of a like we want to hear more of like your pure voice rather than like everything you can do with it and once I sang my second song which was favorite crime by Olivia Rodrigo I was way more comfortable and they were just like you can sing we just need you to like open up and you'll be fine like mm -hmm. don't be so you know don't be so I don't know is it reserved I guess that's a good word yeah reserved so they gave good good advice and it made me definitely less nervous than it was when I walked in there they look like plastic like they're all perfect like they look like plastic they're like robots and it was very scary at first but then they started talking it was really nice yeah. you are the third person to say they look like plastic it's so they funny perfect like it was scary <laughs> I was like Oh, I was like, yes. Like they were sitting there. Like I was like, okay, wow. yeah. Like you're in the. It's funny. We're we're. It's like you're in the the wax museum where you go up to the figures. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'm even wondering too about like if there was any kind of fun banter before you even like got into the music, just like when you first walk into the room. Um, uh, most of it was how young I was. Most of it was, <laughs> was of that. Um, and yeah, I had on a really interesting shirt when I entered the audition room. So I think Katie made a remark on that, but that was pretty much it. it mine was a quicker audition than most people's but it's also because it was very close to the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it was very fast, but a lot of people got no's that day. Like that was a very glo like gloomy day for the audition day. Like the day one in, in LA was so many no's. Mm -hmm. It was really scary for everyone that had to wait for a long time. Like the first three people got yeses that day, everyone until like noon got no's. Like I remember 20 people coming out with no's and I was just like, this is scary. Wow. Like it got real. It got really real. So wow. yeah, I, I'm wondering, and I don't know what your perspective is, because you know you're not necessarily watching the filming of your fellow competitors' auditions, but you know, especially after they've you know had kind of a, a long day of nose, I wonder if going later in the day is like can be a good thing, because like maybe they remember you more because <laughs> that's the note that they left on, or can it be a curse in some ways if they've just been hearing song after song? I think it depends on who's singing. Mm -hmm. I can't say for sure, because obviously I'm not in there all day. Right. But for me, something I remember them specifically saying was, you showed us a lot of what we haven't seen today. And I think that gave me a boost. Mm. And I hate, I don't really like that. A lot of people had to get no's for me to get a yes. Mm -hmm. But it was like, I showed them something that was lacking the day, like that day. So they were like, we should, you know, let's let her through like she showed us something that we haven't seen a lot of and mm -hmm. you know so yeah. now as far as their i know you mentioned some of their comments that they gave you after the performances was was it a, a relatively easy, easy decision for them or do you think there was a lot of deliberating going on it was a lot of deliberating because mm. katie fought for me hard i love katie katie fought for me hard um and she luke was luke was a no and that's okay but Lionel was really on the fence and he was like, you're young, but we need you to like pull it together. Mm. And if you can do that, I will let you through. And I was like, I, I got you. I got you. So then he eventually gave me a yes. And then I, that's how I got the yes. But Katie fought for me. She was like, come on, like, come on. <laughs> so yeah. why do you think Luke said no? I don't know. Luke was Luke didn't talk very much during my audition. Okay. Luke was very quiet. Um, I feel like he's that, he's that caricature on the show. That's like, I'm going to be, I'm the, I'm the stern, <laughs> stern judge. So I feel like he was definitely that. Um, but he was just like, I was too young. That was literally uh -huh. the comment. Yeah. That given. Yeah. It's funny. Literally probably a half hour before we got on here, I was talking to my dad and he's like, you know, I've been listening to your podcast and well, what I've been getting from all your guests is Luke seems to be the harshest one. And I was like, yeah, that, that does kind of seem to be the case. I mean, not me and not like Simon Cowell level, but like just maybe, and I don't know if you, have you watched any of the seasons before this? Yeah, I have. I maybe have. tougher than usual this year? Yeah, definitely. I was, I think this year they were especially tough because it's the 20th, it's the 20th yeah. uh, anniversary. So, and that played a lot into everything that was happening on set. Yeah. So it was a lot going on. I think that's also why he was a little more tougher this season. Well, speaking of, of 20th anniversary, I've asked some of you guys about this. So the platinum ticket, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've been trying to piece together when you guys figured it out on set versus when the viewers figured it out, you know, whenever they announced it. Uh, at, at the time of your audition, did you know what, about this ticket thing that was going on? Yes. So before the top of day one, they had um, Ryan come down, Ryan Seacrest. He came down and they were like, we were like, oh, that's Ryan Seacrest. So you're we all yeah. excited. And then he announced the platinum ticket. But because of like TV magic, he announced it three times to get different reactions from all of us. So we were like clapping and screaming three different times <laughs> to like to react to the platinum ticket. So we found out then what the platinum ticket was. And then they told us the first platinum ticket people we're going to skip the first round of Hollywood week. Awesome. Cool. We get to Hollywood week. We see them up in the little booth thing. Yeah. <laughs> we see them up in the little booth thing and they have like notepads and we did not know. That's what we didn't know at first, unless you were close with the platinum ticket 
you know, people, which I wasn't. Not none of them auditioned in my city. I don't think, except for Kennedy, and I didn't see Kennedy much. It was a lot of people there, so I don't think I saw Kennedy much. But definitely that first time we saw them with the little pens, and then I found yeah. out what the writing was for. Yeah, I was like, wait, we did. Yeah, we didn't know that part. We knew what the final ticket was and all that before my audition. Yeah, I didn't know. I made it to genre challenge, and I got knocked off after genre challenge. Okay. So what happened was they they definitely pulled some TV magic and they lied. I have a clip of when they told us, they told the, the watchers that the entire first line got through. I was in the line with all the kids. All of the kids in the pop genre were in the same line. And they said, your entire line is going through. That was not true. Ooh. Only four people from that line got through. Um, if you remember, Emerson got mm-hmm. through from my line. Valerie, she got knocked off after duets, maybe, or the whatever the third round was. Um, and Kennedy was in my line as well as one other person, I forgot. And the rest of us got knocked off. It was me and I think two to three other people that got knocked off that line. I was very surprised when they said, like, oh, this entire line is going is going through. I was like, oh. So what am I supposed to say? Because they want us to post. Like, they they send us stuff yeah. to, like, post and stuff. So I was like, do I say I got knocked off after genre? Or do I say I got knocked off after duets? Like, it was like a... We weren't, you know, we weren't yeah. told that this was going to happen. Which is, like, all TV stuff. But it was like... Wait. Okay. So I'm confused. And this is not to say that you made it confusing. This is to say that this is the show making it confusing. Yeah. So the judges tell you that you are through... But then, and I could be completely wrong here, then the producers tell you off screen that you're not through or did I completely misunderstand you? No, the judges told us that we didn't make it through. They, oh. cut, they cut a clip of a judge, of the judges telling another line they all made it through with our line. Oh, so okay. On the show, they were like, your entire line made it through. But oh, when we were I actually see. there, they did the step forward, step back. Uh-huh. Here, yeah, that whole thing. Yeah. So I knew I didn't make it through until I saw the the episode, and I was like, they just said we all made it through. But oh, so you're thinking, what do I tell my followers? Because they yeah, because like oh, I did it, I didn't make it through. Mm, interesting. And I, I have to just clarify, because believe me, you were there, so you would know way better than any of us would. But I know you mentioned something about Kennedy performing, and and supposedly they. They told us that the platinum ticket performers didn't perform in the genre challenge. Is that not the case? Did Kennedy? Oh, you're so right. Kennedy did not perform. I'm mixing her up with one of the other line members, and I'm losing her name. But I have a bunch of clips that I posted of those four, um, and they love those four out of our line. And there uh-huh. was—I don't want to say there's favoritism, but there definitely was when it came to like the the line members. Uh huh. So, and they also moved the the road like the order of the lines around a lot i was supposed to go first in my line and i ended up going like fourth maybe um out of like maybe seven or eight of us Mm. and they also had us kind of separated from the rest of the contestants during hollywood week because we were minors and we were doing school work Mm. so that was that was definitely fun yeah well that that's something we should talk about because i don't think i've had anybody on yet who's talked about it because the the intensity of hollywood week and and I, i do remember talking to somebody about you guys having to go to bed earlier than the rest of them. But uh, I suppose it's a little less stressful that you're not having to stay up as late and you're getting, I know you didn't make it to duets, but I think the duet contestants got like the minors got first dibs on getting their partners and getting into with the vocal coaches and everything so they could go to bed. Um, But so for the first round you were there. So the beginning of filming genre challenge, what did that mean? What were some of the, I don't know if we want to call them perks because I don't know if they were necessarily any better, but what did it mean to be under 18 on the set of Idol for you? So we had a lot of school and it became more probably as it went on. I wasn't there for that long, but even at the beginning of Hollywood week, we're like, we're going to rack up a certain amount of hours that you're in school. You do this many hours a day, you're free to do whatever you want. You could sit on set, you could go to sleep, you could eat food. You can do whatever. You can sit in the holding area and be on camera for a while if you want to. As long as you had the amount of hours they had set for you that day of schooling. You mm-hmm. could sit in school and do nothing and watch Netflix. As long as you're there and you've done schoolwork, it's like we don't care really. Um, but it's by law that they have to provide some type of schooling. They had teachers in there, 
but we all had our own work from our schools, whatever, because I think all of us went to, you know, regular schools before this. So we were all just kind of sitting there, you know, we chilled, had snacks and all that type of stuff. So it was it was not bad. They did have us do schooling during Hollywood week um, on the first day. So we were like trying not to be nervous for our for our performance right. while we was in school and stuff like that. Oh, so it was it was pretty chill. The people that teach school or the the teachers that they had on set, they actually worked with a lot of other kids from a lot of shows. One of my one of the teachers that were there had worked on Euphoria with the kids of Euphoria. And I thought that was so cool. Like, it's like a, they have like a whole cycle of people. And he was like, I worked with America's Got Talent. I worked with Euphoria, kids, all that type of stuff. So it was, I don't know if it was a perk. I was kind of sad I couldn't sit with all the other contestants at a certain point. But like all the kids, we became friends and stuff like that. So it was, it was chill. Yeah. I literally just started watching season two of Euphoria two days ago. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. It's good. Like worth the wait. Um. Did, did you ever feel like you were missing out at all because like the people who were over 18 got to i guess get a little more out of the experience i definitely think so but one thing i definitely remember that i was happy that i didn't have to do is one day um i think that was i think it was hollywood week filming they have a holding area on like a patio of the hotel yeah outside during that period of time hollywood week was actually shot in december it was mm-hmm. really cold as even in California, it was really cold and it was really windy. We were outside shivering. People was cut, huddling up in like coats and stuff. And for filming, if they were filming you directly, they would make you take off your coat. And it was really cold. And you don't know how long that had to be. But one of the other girls, her name was Manda, and we became really close. And she got really sick because of that. She was sitting outside for 12 hours. And the next day she woke up and she's like, my voice is shot mm. and she can't sing. And I was like, I'm happy because they were like, everybody sit outside. And I'm happy that I didn't have to do that. And that I was forced to be in school because I would have been so upset if I got super sick. Like she couldn't even sing for her, her genre challenge. She felt, she felt like that's why she didn't get aired because she did really bad during her genre challenge because she was so sick. And it probably oh, wow. wasn't bad, but it was just like she didn't sing to her full capacity because right of that, so well or in theory with considering his television they could have said oh we're going to show a not so great performance and make it dramatic because oh like you're sick and all that but i guess um i guess that's the way it went but uh were you a part of any of the mentoring that went on where they had the alumni come back i was yeah i was there for um during sports um i was sitting right in the front so there was no way you could miss me you see probably my afro and then like the side of my face or certain point i was so pressed and um it was it was really cool um we saw the other mentors but we didn't really talk to them we i like i spoke to jordan sparks like indirectly but we were all there we saw her performance it was really cool i like i like that they brought back the alum um so yeah it was it was fun so no no nothing like particular because i know they only had like a a select few actually got like a full mentoring session Mm -hmm. so you were kind of just watching as she talked to some others i just watching i know um one person i believe his name is milo he spoke directly to jordan but they didn't air it which kind of sucked uh-huh so but he did get that he got like a bunch of pictures and stuff like that so yeah i remember they it it, i wish they would have shown more because i really feel like there wasn't that much that was shown at mm-hmm. all of the entire genre challenge episode um and then i also have heard and correct me if i'm wrong i think there was like some of it was filmed before the genre challenge started but then other times they would actually pull you from genre challenge filming to work with mentors is that correct um i'm not sure actually i know that a lot of stuff was was shot before the the genre challenge at least all of my stuff was definitely shot before the genre challenge but they, I feel like they know who they want to let through no matter what. I, I know this because somebody was like, I saw this like booklet and it had people's names uh, and it had like the times they were going and stuff like that. So it was like really calculated, I think. Uh-huh. So I know that all of my stuff was done before I even had to perform. Um, but some people, they'd had to come back. Like even after the initial audition, they had people stay extra days to film b-roll and stuff on the beach like they were at the beach at a certain point and i never saw no beach but i had school like the next week so i was like i gotta go home so they sent a lot of the minors home and kept a lot of adults to like do extra stuff so maybe that was that Uh uh-huh 
So, okay, so getting getting cut from genre challenge, I know it's a bummer to get cut from the first round, but being part of that experience, what were I want to hear about some of your takeaways. I mean, who who were some standout performers for you that you watched and you were like, "Wow, they're really good." Oh my gosh, I got to remember names. Yoli, it was a Yoli. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Seeing seeing her perform live was just like a like, she was on America's Got Talent. I don't know if you remember a couple yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah. We, I didn't even recognize, like, yeah. it didn't connect. A lot of people there actually had done other shows, yeah. which was really interesting. I know some people that did The Voice that were there, some people that did Got Talent that were there, and I think that was also really cool. Um, but Yoli's performance was crazy. I also saw one other Delaney, Delaney's performance, which I don't know if, the, I don't think they sh- aired, I don't remember, but her Hollywood Week performance was one of the best performances I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Like it was actually like chills, shock. Everybody in the audience, jaw was on the floor. And I'm so sad they didn't air it. But she, I think she posted a video of her singing the song that she sang for Genre Challenge. But when she got cut off, I was just in shock. I was like, ain't no way. Because mm. all the judges gave them standing ovations. So at that point, you realize it's less of what the judges want and more of what the producers want as it mm-hmm. is a TV show. Is Delaney, I don't know if you remember, but uh, I think in the auditions, Delaney was the girl who was like, they had a whole story where she was a babysitter and on TikTok, the mom connected her with the show. That's, I think, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I know it, it is frustrating because like it makes for like that interesting audition story, but then they don't get shown again. I imagine being there, it's like you're you're witnessing a concert and then you get to be a part of that concert. So that's super yeah. cool to be a performer or, or like a, a music festival or, or or music camp even. I It's got to be like music camp in a way because you're with other kids that do music or young adults, but I'm sure it felt like that in some ways. Yeah, I never had seen so many guitars in one place in yeah. my life. Like yeah. everyone there was playing guitar. I was like, right. whoa. Yeah. So it was fun. It was a lot of jam sessions that I got to be a part of that I got to see. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was really fun, like getting to see everyone else perform and then not be so competitive. It wasn't yeah. tension in the room. We all clapped for each other because we know that even making it to Hollywood mm-hmm. Week, even making it to initial auditions was such a process that we were like, there's no reason to even be so tense and be so competitive mm-hmm. with each other. It was so refreshing to just be like, we're all supporting one another. And that was the best part, I think. Yeah, yeah for sure. And uh I'm curious too about and maybe any memories, not necessarily from the competition or being on stage and filming, but just friends you may have made or or some of those jam sessions, anything that sticks out to you? Yeah. So Nicolina, who got really far, yeah. me and her were very close, especially during auditions and like the first round of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. She's really cool. I just reached out to her not too long ago and just was like, I'm so proud of you. You're doing amazing. She's great. Um, who else? Manda, who was her audition was she wasn't aired as well she was really nice and a lot of the kids that I got to meet we became pretty close because we had to do school together and it was chill it was it was such a fun experience just to like socialize with other people that are so passionate about something as you which was the best part for me is getting to meet people that love music as much as you do and love performing as much as you do and the shared experience like you know that's the best part yeah no it's a beautiful thing I mean it, it's it's like family I mean you know yeah. and and I'm sure that uh, to think of the, the the hundreds of people that over the years have, have been on the show and not necessarily aired, plus the people that were aired. I mean, it's amazing that over 20 years, so many people have gotten to be a part of it because every year you think like, is this country going to run out of talent? It's like, nope, every year there's hundreds of people that come through that are just like, I'm right here. I want to get on TV. Um, but it's so much more than being on TV. It's I think about, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about music, right? I mean, you're you're meeting other musicians and I'm sure that I mean, anything like the, I'm just even wondering, like, what are some things maybe that you learn, whether it's from the judges or just from performing that you're going to take away now? Because it, you might not have been aired, but you, I'm sure you got some advice that you'll take away. Yeah, I think it's all about giving every performance everything. Like, yeah. you don't know who's watching. You don't know who's going to if you're going to air or not. Like at that point, I didn't know if I was going to air or not. Um, it just was giving it your all, no matter who's watching. The entire, all of the judges see me. I can now say that Katy Perry and Lionel Richie and LeBron have seen me perform. Right. And that's the best part, I think. So just giving everything your all is, was for me. And like, you know, that was, that was the most important thing. Yeah. Now you mentioned going to art school and that's interesting because I'm sure there were a lot of other contestants there who had also gone to art school. But I mean, do you think that 
uh, did you have maybe any, was there any advantage? Was there any, do you think having that performing experience helped you at all in the rounds that you got through? I think yes, because a lot of 16 year olds can't say that they did American Idol and they were scouted off of Instagram. It's like something that a lot of people won't be able to say in their lifetime. No one from my school, at least, and it is in our school. So a lot of people have done big things. Like I know someone that did America's Got Talent and got to like semifinals that went to my school. And it's like not a lot of people can say that. So I was really happy to be able to be like, you know, hey, we can do this like in my school. It is sometimes very competitive, but we're all like a very tight community. So it's like we all support each other. And the support I received from my school just for even making it that far was yeah. like huge. Like even if I didn't air, they were showing my pictures and stuff. I was like, oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> so it was I think it's really nice. I think it gave me a little step like to to be able to perform as I, as well as I did oh, even right. in auditions and take the take the knowledge that they gave me and apply it I think yeah totally totally and um yeah I imagine that that it's almost like a homecoming like even if you didn't air like getting back to go back to school after filming I'm sure everybody's like oh my god Jordan's here yeah. like that must have been so much fun yeah it was the same day I got back I went straight into tech week for a performance we were doing at school. Oh, wow. I wasn't technically supposed to be a part of it because of how long Hollywood week was going to run. But when I got cut, I went home early uh -huh. and I was, I texted my, my department chair and I was like, Hey, can I still do the show? Like, I'm going to be back. Even though it's sad, I got kicked out the show. I want to still perform with you guys. Cause you know, and she was like, of course. And I got thrown right into tech week. And then we did a show that weekend that I got back and it was, it was crazy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So, well, you know what? I mean, like you said, I think that there's so much that you're going to take with you from this American Idol experience. And I'm wondering what's next for you, because I'm sure that, you know, there's there's so much music being made, whether it's songs being written or producers you're working with. I want to hear about everything that's that's in the works for you. Yes. So I'm about to graduate high school, which is crazy. Yeah. Um, I'm about to graduate high school. Um, so that's like a whole thing in and of itself. It's a lot going on right now. But I've also been producing my own music. I have a single coming out sometime this summer. It hasn't been announced, so it's not like a specific date. But I have a single coming out this summer and probably an EP coming out before the end of summer. So that's really exciting. Um, I produce my own stuff, so it's a learning process for me. Um, and what else, what else have I been doing? Um, I've been doing musicals and stuff. That's like always what I've been doing. So it's I've gotten offers to go on other shows, like to go on other seeing shows. But right now I'm kind of like waiting on it. I, you know, I'm just taking a breather. Like after I just did a lot with Idol, that was a lot of time and effort. So it's just kind of like, I'm gonna take a breather and then I'll reach out to whoever needs me next. Um, but yeah. Yeah, well graduating high school, first of all, kudos. I mean, you Thank know, you. having been there, that's a big deal. Um, I mean, I, I don't know, I know where it's an American Idol podcast, but I, I'm just, as a, as, a, as a fellow human being, I'm curious, how are you feeling about uh, the next step going to college I'm assuming it and and what's next for you yeah I'm gonna keep doing music I mean that's just that's just gonna be my life um I really want to do music forever and perform and stuff like that so college for me will be just like a a, a stepping stone to get to where I really want to go um I'm going on like a free ride for my first year which is really cool awesome so um yeah, I'm just ready to just keep doing music and just keep growing. I think that's always what it's about. Always learning. I always want to learn more about music and everything. So, yeah. Yeah, and more more people to meet, more artists to meet. I mean, I don't know where you're going, but potentially other musicians. And you never know who, who's going to be put in your path. I think that's probably exciting. That's probably almost a similar feeling to what you may have had when you went to American Idol is you never know who you're going to meet as you embark on this journey. Right, yeah. You never know. I think that once I get to my college and all that type of stuff, it's about branching. It's always about networking, I think, yeah. more than anything else. I never say no to performance. Somebody asks me to perform, I'm like, when and where? Let's go. Mm, like, I, I think I that's that. also a thing about me. I'm never going to say no to a potential opportunity, no matter how small it is. It doesn't matter if I'm singing in a parking lot. I'm going to do it yeah. because it's something that I love to do. So, yeah, I'm very excited for college and just meeting new people and getting to perform in new spaces. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's going to be cool to win and with all the icebreakers. I was on American Idol. Like, <laughs> Oh, my gosh. I've gotten that so much. My friends, like, brag about it, like, more than I yeah, do. No. I'll be sitting with my friends, and they're just like, yeah, she was an American Idol. 
yeah okay 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 yeah um or who knows if i mean if you if you end up going on any other shows we never know where else we might see you and and what other shows that they'll have to brag about but we never know yep are you watching this season of idol i am watching um the top three was just um revealed finale airs tonight i don't know when this episode of our podcast is coming out we'll know the winner when it's out but as we're recording this we are uh, hours away from finding out who the next american idol is so that's exciting i'm really excited who do you think's gonna win i don't know i I want i like i i hate like i feel like um what's her name the 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 short hair one with the who wears the hats like she's Yes. Oh my gosh. I love her so much. I think she's going to win. I want her to win. She's, she just seems so nice. Like she's so genuine, genuine. Um, she was friends with, uh, uh, Fritz. Yeah. Um, so I think they're like, I saw them like, you know, a meet practically or like, you know, become closer friends. So I think that that's cool. She seems like a really nice person, even though I didn't get to meet her directly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really want her to win. I think she's going to do great. I think it's been a really exciting season because it's like I it's just like always surprised me. I mean, I thought Fritz was going to be in the finale, so I was surprised when he got sent home, but everybody's really good. So it's like and you were there, you know them, you've seen them yeah. perform. So I'm sure <laughs> yeah. as a as a contestant, it's, you know, you understand what it's like to be there and how hard they've been working and how bad they all want it. But, you know, overall, I think that it it must just be really cool to be a part of that. So Jordan, uh, before we go, can you just tell everybody where they need to go to follow you, check out your music? Uh, take it away. Yeah, so you can follow me on Instagram at j with two y's dot the dot dreamer, and you'll find everything you need to find there. Really, um, I'm drum music, so stay tuned there, and you will see everything. Um, I'm also on Twitter. I don't post much on Twitter, so you don't have to follow my Twitter, but it's the <laughs> same handle, and um, that's pretty much it. So yeah. Awesome. I just actually made a Twitter for the show today. So funny enough, you can follow at Idol Unaired Podcast on Twitter as well as Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for clips from the show, info and upcoming guests. And uh, if you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure you're subscribing, rating, leaving a review. Same thing on Spotify. You can't leave a review, but you can rate and you can follow. Wherever you're listening, thank you. Or if you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much as well. And uh, thank you overall for being a fan of American Idol Unaired. Thank you guys. Have an amazing day.